we go on to the rock section. And yes, it needs to be said like that. Rock. Um, but it's not really appropriate for the first album in this section to be reviewed, which is... Um, oh, I, I keep forgetting the title of it. Uh, Every Country's Son by Mogwai. And still no references to Gremlins. I'm kind of surprised by that. I really thought it was a bit too on the nose. Then again, they have a song called Mogwai Fear Satan, which is kind of one of those. Well, the thing is, I think they did say about how they didn't intend for it to have any Gremlins link. I think it was a sort of working title name for them. And then they decided, uh, we've, we've got this far. We'll stick with it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this... I, I put this in the rock section because it's sort of like that was the section I could most easily place it in. Technically, it's, it's classified as post-rock. Is that it? Post-rock is still rock. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I never... I don't understand the whole post-punk, post-rock, post-metal, any of those terms because it's sort of like... Post music. Oh yeah, because post music is a term, isn't it? It's a term for one specific fan. I can't remember the name of right now. They decided to call themselves that. It it feels like they might have just been taking the piss there. Quite possible. Yeah, Mogwai. They are one of the, the leading aspects of post rock these days. Mm. As if you know of post rock, you probably know of Mogwai. Yeah, I mean, I found out about Mogwai because of you, and it's kind of like the diametric opposite because I also know of various post metal bands because of you and i can't stand most post metal with the exception of cult of luna yeah but then post rock is kind of different i guess they have the kind of same similar kind of elements but they're still quite different mm. well post rock is much more sort of landscapey in quite a few cases yeah a lot of post metal doesn't which one is kind of sludgy yeah this is post sludgy metal which is a genre in itself but yeah i mean every country sun i it is very much a uh, sort of designing these soundscapes and you kind of are able to imagine various islands and oceans and at least this is the sort of visuals that I get because when I listen to music I do very often get various visuals going on. I think post rock is one of those genres that allows you to do that at post because you know, it is a lot of, you know, of sweeping soundscapes and what being instrumental as well most of the time. Mm. And occasional very close in my voice stuff but most of the time it's instrumental. Yeah. A lot of post-metal and post-rock bands are instrumental as well. Mm. I mean, what's interesting about a lot of the songs is they're not especially complex and have quite repetitive patterns, but because of those repetitions, that's what causes you to envisage various patterns of your own. I mean, I, I get sort of... With Culverine, for example, the opening song, that gives me images of wide open skies filled with pinks and purples, of icy cold landscapes and gr deep green hues, sort of aurora borealis kind of visuals. Yeah, I can see that. Well, visualise that. Mm. Culverine's a damn good opening song as well. Yeah. Culverine is great for sort of framing the album. It, it gives you a good idea of what the album is going to be like for the most part. So, yeah, overall, it's more Mogwai, and that's very much a good thing. When I I quite like Rave Tapes, the last album, but I kind of just felt a little bit disappointed by it, I guess. It just didn't quite meet my expectations. Mm -hmm. But as for Every Country Sun, I think they managed to once again meet the expectations again. It is a damn solid album. Mm -hmm. So, that's a good sign. Also, once again, they have, still have their ridiculous song titles. I mean, Cool Verena itself is a cool title. Also, mm. A Thousand Foot Face, for example. Oh. And they've always had some pretty uh, good song titles. <laughs> or Brain Sweeties. Battered at a scramble. I mean, some of the previous albums have things like, um, I love you, so I'm going to blow up your school. <laughs> what? Yeah, that is one of the songs. Very good song, actually. Actually, thinking about it, if that was primary school me, I that would make me fall in love with someone. <laughs> I hated my school. Um, also, Glasgow Mega Snake. Which, I... <laughs> okay... <laughs> There's not much you can really say to that, except, okay. Um, the Junior just had a lot of good song titles throughout their career. Yeah. I have like half of their albums, so I've seen quite a lot of them. I did get the rest of them. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing I will say is I'd probably rearrange things so that the heavier songs would be closer to the middle of the album. Yeah, I can see that. It's 
Hopefully, it's definitely a very good opening. Mm. But I think other than that, I mean, I just some of the other albums. The final songs never seem to quite meet what I would expect from them, with the exception of the self titled, also titled um, Young Team, the first um, mm. debut, is what I was looking for. Yeah. Which finishes with Mock by Fierce Aiden, which is 16 and a half minutes long, and it's fantastic. I mean, I quite liked the title track as a closer. It's a nice wind down and feels like a natural progression for the album. Um, it has a bit of a yearning feel for it. Hmm. Um, kind of like the band had more that they would have liked to say, but this is all they could really muster. Yeah, I can see that. But, yeah, I am impressed with this album. Mm. But I think Wolverine's one of my favourite tracks. It's a damn fine opener. Mm. Oh, I was trying to remember what the other song that was, I really liked. AKA 47 is pretty good. Yeah. It's been pretty surprisingly short for Mogwai, actually. The listeners are relatively short, which is kind of unusual for Chris Hop. It was in that four or five minutes long. Mm. Um, yeah, I think I'd probably cut Party in the Dark because it kind of fades into the background for me. That's fair. I mean, coming after Wolverine probably doesn't help. Mm. We just move it somewhere. Um, both Wolverine and Brain Sweeties kind of have a bit of an anathema feel for me. Yeah, I'm going to say that. I mean, anathema, especially with their later stuff like Weather Systems or the Optimist. Yeah. I've always you know, had a lot of uh, kind of soundscapes to them. Yeah. Or well, have you listened to Distant Satellites? I don't think I have, no. I think I've actually got around to listen to that album. <laughs> uh. I think I played some of that stuff live when I saw them, but I haven't actually listened to the album yet. Mm. It, it has very much a feel of Distant Satellites as well. Um, oh, Battered at a, at a Scramble. Um, now that had a very cool feel for me because, well... It's the closest we'll get to another Tool song anytime soon. <laughs> you know what um, AK-47 actually makes me think of a little bit? Mm. We think of some of um, Perturbator stuff. Yeah, I can hear that. Things like um, the uh, so Femme Fatale from Uncanny Valley. Yeah. Or Lilith. Or no, with, um, oh, what's it called? Voice of Failure from Dangerous Energy to say is uh, Iron Light. Mm. Yeah, I can hear that. It's not kind of very, very kind of almost open, kind of relaxing period. Someone just chilling back in a, a bar kind of style. Mm. Or kind of ambient noise rather than actual music and such. Yeah. Which for, for post rock and synthwave actually works very well. So mm. You can just chill out too. Yeah. yeah. To clarify, with battered at a scramble, it has a very lateralous feel to it. I had to slow myself down there because it was sort of like, how do you pronounce this? Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of like a what would happen if George Harrison penned Beatles songs had a love child with Lateralus. <laughs> Just looking at it, there's only two Mogwai R studio albums I haven't heard. <laughs> Can't really argue with that. I have nine, so... It's actually... I wasn't, you didn't even properly get into them until a couple of years back. Despite the fact they've been around forever. <laughs> yeah, well, consider Alphaville. True, they've been around... Literally forever twice. And I still can't find that album, you know. I've been trying to find it. It just doesn't seem to exist. I think I did find it a while back, but I have to check. But I think I, I found it in my HMV, so go figure. I tried finding it in London. I tried finding it in Plymouth as well. I got it asked in Plymouth, and the only a thing they had in stock was an old album on vinyl specifically. That's it. Yeah. Plymouth one's pretty big. Or it might have been it might have been a case of I did find Alphaville, but I didn't find that specific album. It would like be to find it because it is pretty recent, but no, it just doesn't seem to exist anywhere, and that makes me sad. Yeah, well, recent albums can't find Tech Nine anywhere. True. It's a Mogwai, it's easy to find. You can usually find most of the stuff. Which is kind of ridiculous. It's sort of like, Tech 9 ridiculously well-known at this point, and yet can't find him anywhere. Mogwai! I think Mogwai very much made their name as one of the leaders of the post-rock movement, as a pretentious person would say. Yeah, well, who listens to post-rock? Hipster fucks like us! This is true. But anyway, uh, final score? I'd say probably at least a 4. So 4.25. So 4.33. Um, yeah, I, I'd go with a 4. It's one of those initially, I gave it a 3.5 and it's grown on me. And it's it's very much an album that benefits from re-listens. 
that's quite common, I think, with a lot of these kind of things. It is the kind of thing you have to be in the right kind of mood for. It's going to slip into the soundscapes. Mm. I reckon that with anything like this, multiple listens, different at different times of day, different kind of moods, will be going to have a different opinions of it. Yeah. I mean, this is the sort of album that you can put on if you need to get to sleep. Not to su- suggest it's in any way boring, it's just very good for chilling you out. Yeah, I can hear that. Then again, I sleep to anything I can find. I think I went to sleep with doing something in the middle of the day. Yeah. Whereas I actually have great difficulty getting to sleep while listening to most stuff. That's fair. Well, correction, listening to most music. I, I tend to get to sleep whilst listening to reviews, that sort of thing, but whatever. That's the kind of white noise effect you get from people talking, I guess. Yeah, it is pretty much that. But yeah, if you like Mogwai, it is a strong addition to their catalogue, actually. Hmm. And if you like post rock then you probably know who Mogwai are and probably know your opinion of them already. But if you don't, take it out anyway. If you just want something to chill out to, it's a pretty good choice. Yeah. I'd say it's worthwhile checking out if you just want something out of the way and a bit different. This this is a great album for something that... It won't necessarily make you a fan of the genre, but there is something enjoyable for anyone in this album. None of it is oppressive. I mean, it's very easy to just let it wash over you and ease into the music. So, if you're not so inclined towards rock music in general, this would actually work well as a good introduction to rock music because you're able to just let yourself... um, This is where I sound really pretentious and all New Age spiritually. You're able to become one with the music... Yeah. And then I became a fucking hippie. <laughs> I'm the music dude. You're harsh in my chill. But I think it's also Mogwai especially as a band as a whole. Yeah. But this album included is the kind of thing that if you really want to just you know, lie down, turn off the lights and just lie there and listen to the music. It's yeah. Not the occasionally with any music, but pretty strong especially. Yeah. This is the good kind of just lying down and listening to the music as opposed to lying down listening to The Smiths. <laughs> I hate myself. I just want the world to be over. Uh, as, one of the, as one of the things is sort of like, you know you've hit rock bottom when someone gives you a Smiths album to cheer you up. <laughs> anyway, next... <laughs> 